up YouTube, Topaz Ace back for another review, and this one said that Joyner Lucas, Broken Stupid, and I'm giving it the yellow light, man, because I like the concept, I like what he's doing with this entire song, it's just the execution of it just isn't there, it's not on a level that's necessary for it to be dope. Okay, so first, let's look at the concept to break this down. See, you can hear in the sample that they got going, this is a old sitcom, I do believe, from way back when, where it's trying to break down a joke of, there's nothing worse than people that are broken stupid. But yet, when you break down the lyrics that Jordan Lucas is spitting on here, he's recognizing that he is who this person is talking about. There's nothing worse than a person who's stupid. As he's saying in these bars, like, yo, I was diagnosed with ADHD type slow. Like, I was in special education. I might have to go to school again type slow. That's him being stupid. And the point that he's all but flexing on this, talk about all the money and success and things that he has of that nature. Now, you got to understand that he's doing this because he didn't have anything coming up. This is him enjoying his lifestyle as most rappers tend to do when they find some success. That's why this type of song is so prevalent in hip hop, point blank period. So with that in mind, at one point in time, he was stupid and he was broke. But now, while y'all was laughing at him, making jokes about it in sitcoms and stuff, now he got the game. And now the joke is literally on you. And what's dope about it is this type of song is one that I said is prevalent in hip hop, you did. But no one literally goes through and thinks of new different ways to do it to actually give us a message and a positive message at that. For the most part, people is just crapping on others saying, I succeeded, you can't see me. But this one is, y'all was laughing because I was dumb and broke at one point in time, but now I'm shining. But the issue, as I said, was in the execution. Because what he did was hopped on an instrumental that everybody and they mama hopped upon. But yet, he made different variations of it. There's three different variations to that beat. There's the one that everybody rapped on. And then there's two types where he drops the similar type of like vibe that he does for a good bulk load of his songs. Much like how Hobson always did it. You could tell they're from the same bloodline and such. Like... The type of drum patterns that these individuals tend to use, they tend to be similar, just different instruments, different samples, and things of that nature. And it's because they know what they flow best on. As the two different drum patterns that come in for this sample right here, it does add a different like level of variance to it, but yet it still feels a bit of the same like when you go back to Devil's Work, it has that same kind of essence to it. And I wish he would switch it up more, but I do believe that Jordan Lucas is limited in that direction. Like, what he's great at is developing great concepts. Lyrically, he's pretty good at times, but yet, that's all he really focuses on. Like, for the most part, these vibes that he consistently do, they are rather similar and that will get old after some time as I've seen a bunch of people somewhat complain about it already, you dig? And he really just needs to continue to develop and evolve as an individual, but for where he's at, he's still cool. As lyrically on this song, he doesn't do a phenomenal job on it, it's more concept related that makes it good, but yet the brief moments that he's having up on this on how he said, okay, I took devil's work and turned it into God's blessing as he's referencing the past song that he just released as he's already trying to make punchlines and stuff about it. And that's always a key warning when it comes to individual artists. You did when they start looking back at songs that they did that people deemed as hits and including them as quote unquote balls, you can kind of see that the beginning to become limited. But this is still the beginning of Jordan Lucas's career. So I think this is him just taking what all those other past acts did as they was falling off and implementing it into what he's doing now. Hopefully it'll work out better for him and he'll turn it into more of a better artwork instead of a sign of the demise. Another punchline, if you want to call it that, is quit acting like a brat, I'm not Jermaine Dupri, as that's clear as day, everybody should know that one, everybody should know the brat and Jermaine Dupri. Not a good ball though, and these is like some of the better ones because he's more 
going in the direction of real talk on this, like how he said, yo, I thought money was going to change me, but it really just changed my partners and stuff, in which that's real talk, because honestly, anybody with money will kind of tell you this, like, people treat you differently when you come up with nothing when you're around them and such they treat you a certain way but when you become somebody when you actually show that you are necessary for the existence in order to live a better way and stuff they'll begin to switch up and treat you in a completely different manner and that joint is kind of weird fam especially when you're looking at it like okay i grew up with you guys like you really don't have to change for me. You don't have to do much for me because I'm still here. I still got love for you, whatever. And it's obvious that you're changing up because I'm doing my thing out here, you did. Overall, an interesting song, man. I definitely like the concept of how he pieced it all together as it's a different variation of a commonly used sample and concept, but yet did it in a much better way. Now, the execution of it, as I said, not great. And that's why I'll say go ahead and peep it out when you get a chance, but hopefully the album that he's got coming will be better than this because this ain't it. I'm hoping for a more diverse album on top of it, but just based off of all the singles that have led up to this point, I don't think we're going to get that. I think Really, we've already heard the best of what Jordan Lucas has to offer with this skill set, and it's his time to grow and evolve from here. But hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully he'll drop something phenomenal. But as we close out this video, man, let's go ahead and talk about one thing in particular that happened in the news. Did you guys see the trailer for The Revenge of the Dreamers? Well, this looks like it's going to be fire. Because this is J. Cole, The Revenge of the Dreamers' new project that's coming out, which is a collaboration of his record label and all that. But yet, what's fire about it is he came up with a different, unique like way to create this new album where he was seeking out local talent and just a random studio and all that and had people just coming in. And just based off of how competitive individuals can become, they just was using that to create the best songs possible. And I love to see that, especially seeing a lot of individuals getting a chance to shine on this upcoming project, clearly. And people were pushing each other to get better. This may be like the best means of growth that you can possibly see. See, because when I listen to individuals mixtapes, especially ones that comes with groups and all of that, man, I tell them all the time, work on your chemistry in order to get better. Because that's the thing that pushes people the farthest. When you see somebody who's doing better than you, and you have that competitive drive that I'm not going to let you continue to be better than me. I'm going to learn. You're going to step up your game. You're going to try to write the best you can. You're going to try to memorize all your lyrics. You're going to try to step forth in that studio and be the best. And if you don't do that, then clearly you shouldn't be signed to a record label like Dreamsville or anything like that. So this ultimately gives me hope for this album because I was already somewhat chalking it up like, yeah, these guys seem to be kind of along the same lines, doing the same kinds of stuff, where the last track had simplistic production and it wasn't that great of a track. But yet, with that in mind, like, we could possibly see these individuals within Dreamsville Records actually shine harder because they are forced in a position where they have to grow. And this is what everybody needs to put themselves into, man. I know it's stressful. I know there's no guarantee that you come out on top. Sometimes you're going to look bad because somebody else will shine harder than you because they got better talent. They were just in a better position at that moment. But yet, this is what's necessary in order to grow. And I think this could be it for them. Excited for it. We're going to see. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there, and you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article.